here and I don't know where you are, but I'm in Eastern Virginia enjoying a snowpocalypse as the people around here have been calling it. It's really not that bad, but yeah, we can't really go a whole lot of places. So I figured since I had to shoot a video, this would probably be the best time to do it. So if you are following at all, um, like I said, I'm going to be, you know, being more active on my channel and I'm going to be trying some new things. I'm going to be taking some pointers from my favorite booktubers. And just for clarification, I'm not a booktuber. I'm an indie author and yeah, you'll see me posting book reviews and things like that. But you'll see me doing a lot of other stuff too that kind of more fits, you know, my role. You know, I, I have a day job where I work with special needs children that takes a lot of my time. Um, I blog full time. I try to blog at least once a week. I usually do it about twice depending upon what's going on. I try to release at least one publication a year, which is nothing compared to those people who release like two or three books a year. I don't know if those people have day jobs or not. But anyway, um, and, on, and on top of that, you know, I'm involved in other stuff. You know, I'm, I have book clubs, I have friends, I have a husband, I have a life. So I have a lot going on. So I don't really fit in with the booktuber community so much as just I'm a fan of what they're doing and I'm taking some pointers. Um, every year I do the Goodreads challenge and for I, probably the past two or three years I've done the same goal and I've never really blogged about it or anything like that. I've always done an end of the year wrap up just to say, hey, this is what I read this year. And so I've decided maybe I should start, you know, throwing some of that out of it out there and maybe getting some feedback on it. And I'm actually upping my challenge this year. And my whole mentality with that is, if I make my goal, whippee! If I don't, eh. Because honestly, I mean, as long as I am, you know, actively reading, I feel like I'm accomplishing something considering that most people never read a full book after they graduate college. So, not only am I reading books, I'm writing them, <laughs> you know. So anyway, I'm trying to wrap this up a little bit. Um, I have a list here and I've never done a list before because basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to challenge myself in more ways than one. For the past three years my reading goal has been 24 books. That's two books a month which has been pretty good. I'm actually upping it to 30 which is not a huge number but it is when you you know you're realizing that you're trying to squeeze in some extra you know material there and so um I've actually made a list and this is a very specific list that I'll be talking about more in other videos down the road so you're not going to see all the names and titles scroll over the screen maybe I don't know regardless you're not going to see all the you know images of the books appear on the screen or I'm not going to hold them up because I don't have them all right now but um the books that are on this list are let me get my eyeball down <clears throat> The books that are on this list are probably books from a series, a series I've already started and I'm close to finishing, or it's something that I've had for so long and I've been meaning to read it for so long that, darn it, why haven't I read it yet? And so what I really want to try to do this year, fingers crossed, I need your support, pray with me on this, I'm going to, you know, read these books and I'm going to review them. But I'm hoping to get in contact with some of these authors and maybe actually interview them. Now, most of what I have here is going to be a list of indie books written by indie authors. But there's some really, you know, popular best-selling authors on this list. They might be indies, but they have their own conventions and things like that, some of these people. so. And there's also some mainstream stuff on here. I mean, I... I'm an indie author myself and I love supporting the indie community, but a good book is a good book. So you may see some mainstream stuff on this list as well. And you also have to consider the fact that new releases come out all the time. Something might come up and I might be like, you know what, I got to read that right now and something will get knocked off the list. I'm really hoping that doesn't happen. I really want to try to get to every book on this list, but if it doesn't happen, eh. <laughs> so here is what I have. I have read um, all of the books in the Casa series by Alex J. Kavanaugh, but of course he recently released a, a little novella. I think it's a prequel to one of the stories, I can't remember, and I have it, I just haven't read it yet. And he also released a book called Dragon of the Stars, which I've had it for a while and I really feel like an idiot that I haven't read it yet. 
So I want to try to read that. Also, Stacey Rourke, one of my favorite authors, hands down. If you haven't read anything by her, do it. Um, it will help that if, if you like humor, she's very funny. Um, also, um, fantasy and paranormal elements. But even if you just are into contemporary stuff, she does that too. And so um, I've read um, all of her um, Griffin series. That's my favorite series of hers. She's been releasing little novellas in that series, like back to back to back. And I'm just like, I've already pre-ordered. I'm ready for the next one. But within that series, somehow I missed her Sidekick Chronicles. So I'm going to try to read some of the books in the Sidekick Chronicles. And um, she has a contemporary um, series called, um, um, I think it's called Real something i'm a fan yeah but the first book was adapted for film the second one is going to be turntables and when that one comes out i'm going to be all over that as well um i'm going to try to read um, more books in the nexus series by carrie butler read the first one loved it and um geez i mean if i could get in contact with her and interview her as, as stacy or alex any of these people i want to interview them even if i don't get their interviews i'm definitely going to read their books and review them so next up is Russell Nolte. He is an indie comic book um, artist who um, I've, I've actually interviewed him on YouTube. I don't even know how that happened. It was really cool. And that's really what introduced me to his work. And I love his comic book stuff. And he started to release some novels. So I'm going to try to be reading his story, um, My Father Didn't Kill Himself, and probably some of, of his other titles. But that's the one I'm going to try to start with. And then there's Chris Faye. Another indie author, I, I follow her newsletter. Um, I try to read her blog on a regular basis, but um, I see her all over the internet in different um, reading groups and writing groups and things like that. And she has um, a two book series, which she just came out with the novella, which I probably snagged that one too. So there might be two or three books by her in her Seismic Crimes series that I'm gonna try to read my goal is to try to re read at least one of the books in these different series that I'm mentioning just so that I've read something by that author uh, next up is a book that I believe has a sequel out but I'm trying to read the first book and I, I believe it's an anthology don't quote me on it but the one that I'm interested in right now is called the LA punk rocker and there's a couple of different authors I believe who contributed to it that I really like I follow them on social media Brenda Perlin is one. I believe it's it's nonfiction. It's it's um, I'm assuming it's a retrospect of punk music and um, how these people relate to it and things like that. And so I love music, and it's kind of shocking that I haven't read more books kind of geared towards music. So um, plus knowing that so many authors that I already respect are contributing to it makes me want to read it. Should have read it sooner. Uh, another anthology that I'll be reading is the second outliers or speculative fiction book i read the first one i actually know the um editor of the book and he's introduced it to me and i have been like a big cheerleader for it so when the second one came out i had to grab that right up jill cooper a friend of mine actually went to a book fair or a convention and met the author spoke to her a little bit uh, heard the premise of her book and bought it for me as a gift and i'm pretty sure i have it around here somewhere I'll have to include that picture and um, so imagine me I get this book in the mail and my friends like this is for you I thought you'd like it and it's kind of has like an angels and demons thing and if you know anything about me and my Toronto Curse series is right up my alley it's a good book so of course I want to read more of her stuff um, the books of hers that I currently have are um, 15 minutes and dream slayer so I'm gonna try to get to at least one of those this year Brian Rathbone, I don't think I have to say a whole lot about him if you don't know about him, look him up. He has a huge following, fantasy author, and I've been reading his Dawning of Power series, but somehow just dropped off. So I'm going to try to pick up, I believe, on the third book, which is either Regent or Dragonor. I have both of them, so I'm going to try to read them. And then Denise Covey, she is just a wonderful blogger, and I... I'm always challenged by her. She does a writing challenge that I try to participate in at least twice a year. They do it four times a year, but you know. But um, she wrote a um, book which I bought, and you know, and I don't even think it's a long book, but that's not the point. The point is, I've got to get some of this stuff that's been on my TBR off the TBR, and why not start with someone that I respect? See, next is Andrew Hess, who is 
a wonderful author and even an editor. He has um, done some consulting on some of my books to help me improve my work. And I read um, the first book in his Ally Ryan series, and it's a um, crime drama, like a thriller, which is not really my genre, but I like what he did with it. So I'm definitely going to continue some more of that. I believe Scorned is out, and there, there's another one in the series. But as long as I can get to at least one in the series, I'll be happy this year. And then um, I'm reading a book for my book club at school, and that is um, Gemini. And that is by Carol Castell, I believe. So this one is, again, is not something that's typically in a genre that I would read, but I'm reading it because of my book club. So, you know, that should be enlightening. I'm also going to be reading Armada by Ernest Clyde. Klein. Um, I don't really think there's much I need to say about that. If you don't know, check that out. I probably won't get an interview with Ernest Klein, but Geek Girl's got a dream, right? And next there is um, The Black Prism by Brent Reeks. Same thing. Um, I'm still reading The Lunar Chronicles. Again, I'm not a booktuber, people, so of course I'm behind on things, and I accept that. I'm going to be trying to read... Um, Cress and Ferris. Um, I still have to get to Wander. You know, I got to finish the series, but at least I'm two books in and I'm working on three and 3.0 or 3.2 or whatever it's called. And then the last one on the list that I'm trying to read is Ignite the Shadows by Ingrid Seymour. That book, I've had it for a while and it's a beautiful cover. Like I said, when I get to actually reading these books, I'll, you know, show them to you and everything. But again, there's no excuse. I just I should have read it a long time ago. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do is give you guys updates on what's happening on my reading list, whether I'm sticking to it or veering off. I'm also going to try to give you updates on things that I'm writing because I am working on stuff constantly and I figured maybe I don't have to be so much about it and share it with you. And then I'll also be doing a series of videos called My Countdown to Cotton Season. This will be the first year that I'm doing three cons, two live events, and one cyber event. And you're going to hear all about them. And um, I'm actually going to be a guest speaker at one of them, which I'm just like blown away by that. So just to give you a quick rundown of what's happening, I'm not going to go into it now. But the cons that are coming ahead are um, the Brain to Book CyberCon. That's the CyberCon um, it's going to be all online, but it has everything that you would get from a regular book fair or con. And I'll maybe leave a link so you can check it out. It's free. Um, the next con that I'll be doing is RavenCon, and that's where I'll actually be guest speaking. That's right. I've graduated to being a panelist. And then I'll also be doing the Tidewater Comic Con. And that's literally one of the events that even if I wasn't doing, I would go. Because, you know, hey, I love Batman. And where am I going to get my Batman fix if not at the Comic Con? So let me stop right there and just say a lot of stuff coming up this year. And um, I hope you'll stick around and enjoy and participate and share. Bye-bye.